I'm going to use CodeHub, and you're welcome to also. So if you want to use that, go to code-hub.org, and then click on New Script and, and copy what I have. Or you could just make a file on your computer. So make the HTML file like this, and then make fractal.js contain the um, JavaScript code. This is the recursive definition of factorial. So n factorial is equal to, well, if n is 0, it's equal to 1. Uh, but otherwise, it's equal to n minus 1 factorial times n. So, like, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, but the times 1 doesn't do anything. Um, so that's how factorial is defined. So we can write a, pr a program that will define factorial and give us an answer. So let's make it function factorial. arguments and then code. Um, so the argument will be one number, factorial of a number, say um, x. And then let's just copy this definition and translate it into code. So there's going to be an if statement. So if x is, what was the definition? If x is 1, I'll, I'll use n because it's the same as Wikipedia. So factorial of n. If n is equal to 1, no, if, if n is equal to 0, then the, then the factorial of n is 1. So if n is equal to 0, and remember it needs to be two equal signs, not one. One equal sign will assign n to that new value. But two equal signs will compare them and give you um, true if they're the same and false if they're different. So if n is equal to 0, then return 1. Otherwise, else, return factorial of n minus 1. So we're not call we haven't called the function yet. Um, but once, once we call it, it'll return that number to the caller of the function. So I'll show you in a second. Um, so factorial of n minus 1. And then we can call that function um, console.log. And then we can call it inside of here, factorial of, say, 4 or 3. Factorial of 3, because we know the factorial of 3 should be 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So if you're using uh, CodeHub, notice that when you save it, it increments the ID at the end. So if you have another window open, you can just replace that last number, and you'll get the updated one. It's 1. Oh, yeah, n times. n times factorial of n minus 1. Because what was happening before is it was just recursing down until it returned 1. So I'm going to save this and then update it. So now it says 6 right here. So it works. So factorial of 4 should be 6 times 4. It's 24. So if we want to print, so here's the, um, the factorial table in Wikipedia. Let's do this up to 10. So we can, we can make a for loop. Uh, for i is equal to 0, i is less than, we want it to go up to 10, so less than or equal to 10. What? Then it'll give us from 0 to 9. Yeah, let's start it at 1 and go up to 10. So this will, gi this will give us 1 through 10. So I plus plus, and then inside the for loop. And by the way, with for loops and if statements, <clears throat> if it's only one line of code, you don't need the curly braces. So this will work without the, the curly brace here and here, because it's just one line of code. So we can say factorial of I. So actually, we can um, print.
print out factorial of some number equals then actually call the function. So this will print out factorial of 0 equals some value and then factorial sorry factorial of 1 and then factorial of 2 equals the number that it gets. So let's see what it looks like. So it works. 1 2 6 24 120 and that sh that matches the table in Wikipedia. So the Fibonacci numbers are defined like this. Uh, the Fibonacci number n is defined as the Fibonacci number n minus 1 plus the Fibonacci number n minus 2. And if f is 0, if n is 0, it's 0, and if, if n is 1, it's 1. So your exercise for the next five minutes is to write a function that computes the Fibonacci numbers. So go for it. Cool, it works. So zero, one, one, two, three.